Judea Pearl introduced the use of directed acyclic graphs to represent causal models of reality. Okay, so what are graphs? Graphs are ma mathematical structures that instead of using formulas, they use graphics. They have two elements, nodes and edges. So what's directed? Directed is represented by the headed arrow. So there is a direction. So the, the connection between one node and the other node needs to be an arrow rather than being just, just a link. There are mathematical structures with links and they are perfectly okay, but they are not useful for causal models. In causal models, there is a direction. One uh, variable causes an effect on another variable. And what is acyclic? Well, if you have a path that goes from node 1 to node 2, there cannot be a path that goes from node 2 to node 1. And this has to do with um, the mathematics of using this structure. This is a limitation. Okay, so these are the directed acyclic graphs or DACs that Jude Appel proposed to represent causal models of reality. Let's go through uh, uh, more details. So as I said, these graphs have nodes and edges that connect the nodes. And they represent, we use this mathematical structure to represent causal models. So the nodes would be variables and the arrows represent causal relationships between variables. You will see in different articles and books different ways of representing the nodes. Sometimes they are represented with white circles, sometimes with white uh, black circles, sometimes uh, just the, uh, an empty circle. Some people use squares and sometimes squares and circles mean different things and, and so on and so forth. In this course, we are going to use only one interpretation of what we use. We're typically going to use cir white circles, but we may eventually uh, use other, other, other representations, but they all mean the same. The important thing is the arrows, which variables are connected and the direction of the connection. This is the simplest constant model in my interpretation. And you're going to see that this is not something that is uh, shared by, by philosophers and scientists who are interested in causal models. I, but I wanted to show this because I wanted to show you the difference between the Newtonian idea of causality and the Aristotelian interpretation of causality. And in this case, I'm going to be on the side of Aristotle, and but that's not what uh, researchers do these days. They side on the side of Newton, and I'm going to explain how this uh, is, is uh, appears in the in the simplest causal model. So my simplest causal model is more complex than other models. So. We've got x, which is the causal variable of interest, and y is the causal variable, which is the effect of interest. For example, we can be interested in whether practicing uh, running increases the, or reduces the time it takes for people to run 100 meters. Okay, so that's the uh, practice is the causal variable and the time, the running time is the effect variable. Now C is a variable in which everyone has the same value. You may, you may think, well, wh why is this an interesting thing? If everybody has the same value, first of all, it's not a variable because there is no variability in values. 
And second, why is that interest interesting? Well, I'm referring to these, for example, to being human. Being human, um, it's um, the, the population we are going to study is humans, and we all the all the observations will be with humans. So all the observations will share this value of being humans. And why is that interesting? Well, because they have an effect on the actual value of y, not in the variability of y, but in the actual value of y. So if we have um, turtles running 100 meters, the range of y values is much larger because, or, or, or not, that, not the range, but the, the actual value of y and the mean of y would be very different because turtles will take much longer than humans. Or if we have cheetahs, they will take much faster. Um, so the mean of y will be different. So if we are interested in, in the value of y, not how y varies, then we need to understand what's causing that. And the, what's causing that is being humans put a, a limit on the values of y that is different for, the, uh, for other species. Okay, i. i is a variable in which everyone has a different value. So in this case it would be your ID or your name, but your ID and your name is not, not uh, interesting. They, not, they don't cause anything. But the ID and the, you know, their name are a proxy for the unique genetic structure, for example or the unique life experience. So these also have an effect on Y. And finally, U is one or a composite of unknown variables that affect Y. The variables are either un unknown, we don't know which variables affect Y, the, uh, the speed of running uh, 100 meters, or we know the variables but we cannot measure. Like for example, we may think that, that, that uh, some variable affects y, but we don't have the possibility to measure that. It happens a lot in science. So, now, the simplest causal model is not the one I proposed, so in, 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 the, in the field, the simplest causal model has x, u and y. So x and y, is practice and time of running 100 meters, and u is the unknown variables that affect y. Now, c is, is dropped from the model because the main interest in causal models is to explain by variation, not how things are. So we, are, we don't want to explain the, the mean of the variable y, we want to explain why y varies. So, Remember the um, uh, Newton's um, conception of causation is how a change in something on the causal uh, event produces a change on the effect. We don't want to explain movement that is constant and has been there. We want to explain just the change produced by one intervention. Uh, but Aristotle wants to explain everything, why things are, not just the changes. So, the, in science currently, there's an interest in, or at least in these causal models, their interest is in variability. So we are going to use this in, um, from now on. An I is dropped from the model for two reasons. Mainly we need to work with populations or samples that belong to populations. We don't work with uh, in individuals for many reasons. Uh, and, but also um, we can consider I as part of the U variable. So, so for example, the genetic uh, structure we can possibly measure, although it's difficult, uh, the genetic structure of individuals, but we don't know what genes affect why. So 
so i could be one of the unknown unknown variables what part of i has an actual effect on on y we don't know so it could be a part of u so here is the simplest causal model in which variables x and u cause a change in variable y so x is a variable that we know and is a variable of interest and y are variables that we don't know or we don't know how to measure or we don't know whether they they have an effect on y or not so how can we when can we say that x causes y we can only say that when the following is true first if we had if we made an intervention on x a change on y would occur so let's consider whether in the case in which x is i take an aspirin or not and y is whether my headache goes away or remains and let's say i take an aspirin and the headache goes away so that's the first condition i made an intervention on x i took the aspirin and an effect on uh, an effect on y was observed the headache went away but the second part or the second condition is also very important because it's the counterfactual and that change would not have occurred had we not intervened in x so that means that if i didn't take the aspirin then i shouldn't have a reduction in my headache and how do we how do we know that because I did take the aspirin. Well, remember David Lewis said when we need to imagine a possible world in which everything is constant, everything is the same as, as, as this world, except in that I did not take the aspirin. Well, it's not very convincing, but we can do a bit better. So I can... Um, consider situations in the past in which I did not take an aspirin and the headache didn't go away and that gives me some evidence that it was the aspirin that caused the headache go, uh, go away but perhaps there were other circumstances in the past it's not the same as now so it wasn't the aspirin in the past it could be other other circumstances that are not present now that cause the reduction of the pain so what how can we do that well we we cannot know with certainty that it was the aspirin but we can do things to increase our credence on the aspirin being the cause of the reduction of the pain let's say instead of me having the aspirin uh, so on top of me having the aspirin and a reduction of pain we have another person who has a headache at the same time as me and that person doesn't take the aspirin and there's no reduction of pain that increases the, cre the credence that I have on that the aspirin caused the reduction of pain but it may be the case that this person has other you know, genetic structure or a the, the particular headache that this person has is is different and that's why um, this person didn't have a reduction of, of pain and I did have but it wasn't the aspirin perhaps it was the passage of time not the aspirin um, and, they, and this person didn't have a reduction in pain because of passage of time because other reasons that other circumstances that are different than mine so what do we do well, what we typically do is we use large samples. So instead of me taking the aspirin, we've got a large group of people taking aspirin and a large group of people not taking the aspirin. So if, they are, if there was a particular difference between myself and the other person, when we have groups of people, then there is less likelihood that they are differences that are affecting uh, the uh, effect of x on y 
So if we if the group of people who had a headache and took the aspirin observed a reduction on on pain and a group of people the group of people who did not take aspirin did not observe a reduction on the pain then now we can say that x caused y or taking the aspirin caused the reduction of the headache so this is another example practice affects performance and other variables affect performance as the simplest model so basically we want to know if practice affects the the time it takes for people to run 100 meters and so how do we know well we ask a lot group of people to practice and then we observe their performance and another group of people not to practice and we observe their performance and if there is a difference between the first group and the second group then we can say that practice affects performance importantly how do we select these groups of people who goes through practice who do, who goes through not not practice well we have to do a random ass assignment we don't we don't let people decide whether they want because we may have if we if we ask people whether they want to be in the practice group or in the non-practice group perhaps we have good runners that decide to go to the practice group and bad runners that decide to go to the non-practice group and the effect of and the difference in between these two groups has nothing to do with practice the difference was already there before practice so that's why we need to do a random allocation and we don't let people self-select into the groups.